السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you doing, Sheikh? الحمد لله, how are you, Sheikh Nabil? الحمد لله uh, I was thinking we'll just wait maybe a few minutes, inshallah, before we begin Yeah Just to make sure, inshallah, as many people as possible join Inshallah, inshallah And then um, I'll definitely introduce you, make sure everybody's aware of what um, inshallah is going to go on in terms of the program Sounds and I'll good. leave it to you. Sounds good, inshallah. I'll be here, inshallah. So if you have any questions or anything, just um, let me know. Sounds good, inshallah. Zadak la khair. Yaakum. I think we should begin. Uh, no, uh, I don't want to keep the people waiting for too much time. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing, inshallah. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasul al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Um, we welcome you all, inshallah, to this program today uh, with our respected uh, guest, um, Speaker Imam Adich. Um, those of you who have participated in National Zakat Foundation programs before are well aware of Imam Adich and his uh, past involvement and support with National Zakat Foundation. Uh, he has taught many courses, alhamdulillah. And Imam Adij serves as a religious, as a director of religious affairs at the London Muslim Mosque and uh, the Muslim chaplain at Western, uh, in Western Canada. And mashallah, the Sheikh also uh, holds a bachelor's of computer science in from Waterloo and a bachelor's in Islamic theology uh, and fiqh from Medina Munawara, uh, the famous uh, Islamic university, and has also studied in Malaysia. Um, he is currently a consultant for National Zakat Foundation, as well as an imam who uh, supports in uh, educating and um, spreading the awareness of zakat to the community across Canada. As you all know, National Zakat Foundation is a, um, Canada, a Canadian organization in which we collect and distribute all within Canada. And if any of you would like to... Um, donate then you can donate at nzfcanada.com uh, slash uh, donate and inshallah i will add this link into the chat so in terms of the program inshallah um, imam adij will be conducting a specific program um, revolving on the subject of zakat on business and uh, corporations and I will also be here, inshallah, just to moderate. But please, if you have any questions, then you can put them in the chat or in the Q&A box. And as we move forward with the program, inshallah, I will be able to ask them on your behalf. Um, and inshallah, we'll get uh, to everybody's questions. 
Um, without further ado, inshallah, we will begin the program. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for joining us, and um, uh, we are very happy to have you. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Nabil, for having me. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa la'ma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Thank you for joining. Alhamdulillah. Uh, if, can you just, uh, can someone just want to make sure that people are able to type and I'm able to see their messages? Can you just type yes or one if you hear me okay? Can, can you type uh, right? There? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Just want to make sure. Jazakumullah khairan for, for doing so. I am going to share my screen right now. And inshallah on my screen, you will be able to then see uh, what I am presenting. Um, let me just rearrange this. Sometimes Microsoft. Uh, okay, can I uh, be, can I sh share my screen? Sheikh uh, Nabil, if you can give me the access to do so, please. Sure, one second, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. You are now the host, so inshallah, you okay. should be able to share. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Um, let me share my screen right now. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Bye. So um, this is inshallah the um, very uh, inshallah a, a very specific or very um, specialized uh, presentation, right, on the fiqh of or uh, zakat specifically on how to give zakat on a business which is a very uh you know you can call it almost like a niche presentation because here the assumption is that you have a running business uh, that has inventory and you are doing uh, its uh, accounting you have payroll uh, you're running a, a business uh, you know fully you're not employed in by a business uh, you are running a business. This could include, by the way, someone's side hustle. Like, you know, people have, you know, small uh, projects and they run that as a, a separate, you know, entity, as a corporation, and then they themselves have their own employment. Both of those things are okay. Either way, whether you are, you know, doing this as a side hustle, whether your business, you run it fully, inshallah ta'ala, this will be beneficial for you. Uh, the geared, uh, the presentation, excuse me, is geared more towards people who are, running it end-to-end, -end, but I will point out a few things that are applicable to all. Inshallah. Firstly, we'll introduce the idea of business in Islam, tijara, uh, as, as, as is mentioned in the Quran. Uh, and it is a, something that's encouraged in Islam. It is beneficial for a person's livelihood. It's productive for the economy. It has, uh, you know, the, the thing that a business gives, you know, like there's a hadith about yadul uliya khayru min yadul sufla. The hand that's the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The giving hand is better than the receiving hand. As a business owner, you are often the giving hand, right? Not in every transaction. Sometimes you have to be the one that receives, but you are largely the one who is giving. Uh, uh, and that leverage affords you power, independence, comes with baraka, with blessing, uh, and it allows for a person to do a lot. So uh, this is the, uh, you know, the, the, the good parts of uh, business in Islam. So the general ruling of business in Islam is uh, mentioned in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 275, uh, in which Allah says, Those who can consume interest will stand on the day of judgment like those driven to madness by Satan's touch. ذلك بأنهم قالوا إنما البيع مثل الربا. That is because they say trade is no different than interest. It's all the same. What's the big deal? But Allah has permitted trading and forbidden interest. This is important. The distinction is made in the Quran very clearly. Those are two separate transactions. Interest is on a debt-bearing uh, security. Uh, trade is for an asset, a commodity, something that's you know a product or a service. Uh, that is what trading is. Interest is making money on money. Okay, 
فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَى Whoever refrains after having received warning from their Lord uh, may keep their previous gains. فَلَهُ مَا سَرَفْ okay. Whatever happened before you keep. And this is a beautiful part of our religion. If you are someone who was engaged in activities that were impermissible and then Allah guided you and now you want to rectify whatever was your previous gains you keep. فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ Their case is left to Allah. But then afterwards, you must, going forward, make the necessary changes. As for those who persist, it is they who will be the residents of the fire. They will be in there forever. This is a very severe punishment that Allah mentions for the ones who engage in, uh, you know, in, in, in consuming riba. We ask Allah to protect us from that. Um, the benefits of business, as we mentioned before, uh, independence, as, as Sufyan Authority states that uh, if it were not for the wealth, the governments and sovereigns would take advantage of us like we were handkerchiefs. Uh, it's a very good point from uh, Sufyan Authority, uh, rahimahullah. Uh, having a business affords you independence, autonomy. Uh, it allows a person to feel a, a heightened sense of piety and barakah, as mentioned by Abdullah bin Mas'ud. So that a single dirham from a business is more desired to me than 10 dirhams provided by the government. And this is an important part of our deen, that our deen uh, and then our righteous predecessors prioritize, um, they prioritize earning uh, their wealth and earning their livelihood because that was an extension of their worship. That was an extension of Allah's blessings. And uh, handouts and, and welfare for them was for the one who can't do it, right? The one who's just unable to, and they would prioritize themselves to go and you know, earn their wealth. Of course, growth as well. Uh, you know, as the Prophet said, as narrated by Jabir and Allah, Allah, the people to be, Allah will sustain them by way of each other, right? And the idea here is that as people exist, you know, in the, you know, in a, in a system that allows them to trade off each other, and then mutually wealth grows. So this is that. Some some basic idea, and as as we talk about the blessings of business and the blessings of wealth. You also should, you know, we will be averse to not talk about some of the uh, pitfalls, right? Uh, a person who is a businessman or businesswoman, if they uh, acquire wealth uh, in, a, in a manner um, that is impermissible, that it will be, there will be a lack of blessing in that. Uh, and the, the impermissible means are, you know, specified in the Sharia. It has to be void of interest. Uh, interest and usury is riba, right? Uh, it should be void of extortion. That is, uh, you know, taking advantage of somebody that's zulm, right? Uh, or zur, gambling. It's, it's called uh, muqamara in Arabic or in the Quran referenced as maisir, uh, uh, okay? Fraud. This is uh, cheating. Man ghashana fa laysa minna. Wa tudlu biya ila al-hukami li ta'kulu fariqam. Uh, the Quran references this as well that don't create a system of fraud and corruption where the powerful take advantage of the powerless okay uh, theft of course the Quran says don't uh, consume each other's wealth wrongfully uh, right and indecency of course the idea being it is uh, what you know uh, making products that are indecent or selling products that are indecent of course is to be avoided uh, as part of what is haram and of course uh, part of us uh, being muslims and part of us being uh, you know faithful believers is we give our zakat every lunar year now the important thing is if you are an individual and you have no business all you have is your employment then you pay your zakat alhamdulillah that is the end of that right uh, you calculate it whenever you calculate it and then you give it if you are a business yeah if you are an individual and you have a business you have to calculate the two uh, zakats. Now, you can do it all in one if you want to, but my recommendation would be, and this is something that I think could apply for everybody, uh, is that you separate the two uh, out for yourselves, just like you would separate your taxes. You would do your personal tax at a certain time and your business tax whenever, your, uh, whenever the fiscal year for your business is done. Uh, and you do this uh, largely because the business assets the business expenses are kept separately so that you don't pay a higher rate of tax on it personally largely i would imagine that's the case would you all agree with that maybe in the chat someone can say yes or no 
Do you agree, disagree? But yes, you agree with that. Perfect. So same reasoning would apply for making the zakat calculation for it as an independent entity. Doesn't mean that your zakat or your business is now like a mukallaf person, a person who is liable in the eyes of Allah. No, you are liable for your business. You are still the one who Allah will ask you about. But you're doing this to allow you to make sure that each each um, each entity, your personal assets, you calculate zakat on it and give it its due. And then your business assets, you calculate zakat on it and give it uh, correctly and appropriately. All of this is to be done. And that's what I recommend to anybody who has a business, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's a holding company, whether it's like a full business that they're running. Either way, I would encourage you to calculate its zakat as an entity and pay its zakat as an entity. Deductible debts. Now we're going to talk, uh, we're going to get into the technicalities now, inshallah. Okay. And the technicalities here are, are going to be about, uh, we're going to focus of initially on debt because uh, quite often debt is required to operate a business. Okay. Uh, and how do you, how do you calculate uh, or factor debt into uh, your calculation of zakat? Say you have the basic idea of zakat is it's wealth that you have had for a lunar year, then you pay zakat on it, okay? But debt that you have uh, borrowed, that is not necessarily money that is yours. So you, ca you can deduct it from your overall wealth. In, in other words, money that you have borrowed from somebody is not yours, so you don't pay zakat on it. Everything else that is yours, you pay zakat on. That's the basic premise. So here, we're gonna talk about deductib deductible debts. Short-term liability, right? Debt and liabilities that are due within the next lunar year are deductible, okay? Long-term liability. This is the idea that, uh, sorry, the first the short-term liability. The idea here being is that this is something you must pay within the next lunar year, okay? So this is money that you have borrowed, that you owe within the year. That money that you borrowed isn't yours, even if it's sitting in your bank account. So if you were to do your zakat calculation for your business and you look at your business bank account and you're like, this is the money I've had for the lunar year, it's minus the money that I borrowed as a short-term liability, everything else I pay zakat on. That's the idea there. Long-term liability, what if it's like a multi-year loan? Well, then you take uh, one year's worth of payments and deduct it. Say you have a multi-year loan uh, of you know uh, $100,000 for your business, okay? Uh, and then you pay uh, $1,000 a month uh, as repayment. That equals $12,000. It's as if for the short term, that one year, you have $12,000 that, you know, that, that is in your bank account. That's not yours. Everything else is yours. You pay zakat on that. Okay. Arrears are, you know, money uh, that is owed. Uh, and, um, you know, those overdue expenses can be deducted. Once uh can one can deduct whatever is uh, currently due on their zakat anniversary okay so this is an important aspect uh, uh that when you are calculating your zakat again the principle in zakat is that if it is money that is someone else's then you don't uh pay right uh but arrears is money that is owed and should have been paid earlier right you should have paid it before uh so it's as if you are going to give this money to somebody. You've already earmarked it for somebody, you see? Uh, and that was, say, like, say my business's uh, zakat uh, date is today, okay? But I had char I had pay, uh, used this service uh, last week, okay? Now, the bill came last week. I didn't pay it yet, but I ha have the money and the intent to pay it, but my zakat year is already over. So what do I do when I'm calculating my business zakat? I deduct the money from that arrears from my balance because it's as if I've already paid that guy up front or on the spot. You see, that's how you have to kind of view it, inshallah. Uh, and again, uh, debts to be re repaid in the next 12 months should be deducted if the ability to repay that debt is impacted by the zakat payment and in other words that if you feel that the debt is not overwhelming overburdening and you're able to manage without it then it's safer to pay zakat without factoring that in them in now there's other types of debts that are non-deductible much a nice uh, transition there <laughs> brother zaid 
uh, non-deductible debts, future expenses and bills, right? Something not arrears that you have, you should have paid before, but these are future expenses that are to be to, are coming. You don't, you cannot deduct them. For example, like you have, you know, the electricity bill for the next month, but you don't have to worry about that. You don't deduct that from zakat. Next month's rent or utility bills, not payable at all. The next twelve months, uh, a long-term debt that, uh, that is not due to be repaid now on the next twelve months cannot be uh, deducted right now. Same, uh, same principle for it applies. Interest is a more interesting one, which is that the Quran and Sunnah are explicit about, uh, you know, the dangers of interest and how it's impermissible. Uh, so the interest amount that you owe cannot be deducted from your zakat calculations because aslan you should not be paying interest you should not be owing interest right uh, and if there's any money that you have accrued in interest that you've gained from interest then you're supposed to dispose of that it's as if that money is not even there that's the idea of interest and the idea should be that you rel relinquish that unlawful wealth and you stop that uh, inshallah ta'ala uh, going forward okay Zakatable assets. What are assets in a business? And again, we're talking about now like a brick and mortar business here. Okay. And I'll make some comments about like other businesses, like maybe like a side hustle, maybe like a, you know, you're running maybe like a software company. You don't have like brick and mortar assets, but let's talk about all of them, inshallah, one by one. Cash, whatever business you have. If you don't have cash, you have no business. <laughs> right. If you don't have cash, buddy, what are you doing? Uh, but uh, cash is treated as zakatable. Okay, uh, it is payable on currency as it is productive wealth according to zakat principles. It is what's known in Arabic as ma'lum min al din bil darura, right? It is axiomatically known. You have to pay zakat on cash. End of story. Okay, and gold and silver, uh, that is the you know original form of the currency, and today the fiat currency is the de facto currency. So we pay zakat on cash. Your cash that you've held in your business that you keep for a year, that is what you pay zakat, okay? That is one way to do it. Or if you have, obviously, like a, your business is, you know, you have transactions, money coming in, money going out, you can just look at your balance on a zakat date. Your zakat date is Ramadan 1. Ramadan 1, you look at your bank balance of your business and you say, this is the cash I have and I'll pay zakat on this cash. Alhamdulillah. Okay, that is the zakat, 2.5% on the cash. Cash receivables is cash that you are expected to receive, correct? That's, uh, you know, this is cash you're certain you're going to receive, right? Like there's no doubt about it in your mind. Uh, you, this is also uh, eligible for zakat because it is as if you have it in your hand. Trade receivables also are as, uh, zakat eligible. Uh, this is outstanding invoices for goods and stocks sold on credit are zakatable. Zakat is due on the trade stock and therefore due on the receivable, just like on inventory, as we should talk about this. The inventory is an asset, what's called urudu tijara in Arabic. Okay, urudu tijara is what you sell to make money, right? So that is something that's the asset that you pay zakat on, okay? Unlike other assets, like a car, your personal car, you don't pay zakat on it. It's excluded, right? You're, if you had a horse, you won't pay zakat on it. It's excluded. Okay, but uh, your urud tijara the things you are buying and selling with, you would not, sorry, excuse me, you will have to pay zakat on that. So uh, trade receivables, whether you sold the uh, stock, uh, you know, uh, on credit, like you already received money before, and then now you're giving uh, you know, the customer their inventory, or is this inventory that's sitting in your, in your warehouse, as an example. That is where you pay zakat on it. And again, the qualifying uh, thing for zakat always is you've had it for a whole lunar year. If it's hard for you to track how much you've had for the lunar year, you look at the day Ramadan one, right? Your zakat date. Here is what my inventory, and we'll talk about how you value in inventory. And this is the value of it. You know, it's retail price. This is the money that I will uh, have had. This is my cash balance. Uh, and I will add that, subtract from it, maybe some debt that I owe. And the rest, alhamdulillah, I pay zakat on. So this is the idea behind that. Well, alhamdulillah. Okay. If we have, if we proceed to go forward, by the way, if you have questions, you can leave them in the chat or you can put them in the QA, inshallah ta'ala. Let me know. What about software or apps? This is an interesting point because, uh, you know, uh, stock and inventory, 
you can value it. Like if I'm selling cars, I can value the car and the car has a finite value, right? And I have a finite number of them, right? I have a hundred cars in the lot, that's it. I don't have 101. But software, I can send unlimited amounts of software, subscriptions to maybe like a product that I'm selling, like an ebook. I can sell unlimited ebooks, right? Uh, so how do you value that? Uh, in my opinion, the way you value that is you look at your revenue. You look at the money that you made in revenue from the sales of your e-product, whether that's software as a service, whether that's you know any product that's digitally sold, whether it's an app with a subscription. To and we're not you not we're not taking valuations here. We're not taking company valuations because that's subjective. We're just looking at cold hard cash revenue is facts, you know, profit is opinion, like they say, right? So you look at uh, the revenue and that is the cash. Of course, you deduct from it, whatever else is to be deducted as we'll come to that. And then you pay his account on that. That wallahu alam is the best way to go about uh, digital assets, okay? Uh, Non-zakatable assets are uh, as follows, okay? They are uh, service receivables, okay? So say, you know, services are considered not zakatable. Okay, services, uh, the receivables uh, due against services provided are also non zakatable This applies to outstanding fees, accrued income, wages. Okay, say you are a you, you are a barber, you cut hair, that's your business, right? It's a service. Uh, you know, that service, the cutting hair itself has no value and has no zakat. Okay, it's not a rood tijara, it's not a asset that you're buying and selling. Okay, uh, what you are valued on is your uh the amount of sales you made the amount of hair you have cut that's how much money you would get so the, there's no zakat on the service of cutting the hair okay uh the zakat is on the cash okay prepaid expenses the prepaid sum is no longer in one's ownership therefore it's not zakatable right you've already paid it class is done it's not even there okay fixtures and fittings property plant equipment uh, in intangible fixed assets in, in the, this is the example here these are what's called long-term assets. Long-term assets of a company are not zakat eligible, okay? Short-term assets are zakat eligible. What is that? Short-term assets is the example I gave in the zakat seminar of investment was of a bakery, right? The, the short-term assets for a bakery would be the flour, the dough, the, the bread. Mm? And the long-term assets would be the oven, the bakery itself, the sign outside the bakery, right? All of these things, fixtures, fittings, property, plant, equipment, there is no zakat on it, okay? Whereas on the short-term assets, the assets that you uh, are, are using to create your product, like the flour, for example, or the product if you created, the zakat is due on it. Of course, again, given the caveat that it remains with you for a year, okay? Now we move on to non-zakatable assets, receivables, stuff that you will receive, right? You're owed that, yes? All right, let's look at what that is entailing. Uh, non-zakatable receivables are payments that have not yet been received, such as wages not yet received, right? If you have not received wages, uh, you know, there's no zakat on them until you receive it, alhamdulillah, okay? Rental payments not yet received. Maybe you own property, that's part of your business. And mashallah, as you own property, um, uh, you know, like you have, um, uh, you know, your, your, your tenant hasn't paid you rent, right? Well, you can't pay the cut on that cash because you haven't received it yet. Okay. Uh, and similarly inheritance, I guess inheritance is not really part of business, but you know, you get the idea. Maybe it is, maybe you're inheriting <laughs> business from your, from someone, mashallah, or someone's making a bequest to you. Allahu Akbar. You are a lucky guy. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. General ruling is do not add this money to your assets until you receive the funds. There is no backdated zakat on these funds. Of course, the one of the important prerequisites for zakat is istiqrarul mal. What does that mean? Istiqrarul mal. It means the money is in your hands. It's accessible. It's with you. Okay. If you don't have access to the wealth, you don't pay zakat on it. It's very straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, moving on to our uh, next slide, which is other deductible business liabilities. 
Okay. Again, I don't want to make this into like a tax clinic here. Okay. <laughs> that's not the point here. But these are things that you don't have to pay zakat on. That's what we're trying to say. Okay. Uh, outstanding invoices hmm? and trade creditor cre trade creditors a deductible. Okay. Meaning you can say that this is money I don't have anymore. I owe it to somebody. I will remove it from my total cash balance. Utility bills uh, from the previous month, right? Say my zakat is due today, all right? But I haven't paid the utility bill because it's due next week. I will take that amount and say, you know what? That money is already as if I paid it to the company already. It's just that my zakat date fell between my payment and my uh, between my bidding cycle, right? So I will deduct that from my uh, from my zakat calculations. Corporation tax or corporate tax, capital gains tax. Okay, any outstanding tax bill is deductible. This is a simple idea. Just like it's you don't you don't have that money. You have you owe that money. You have to give that money to the government, right? It's like the in, invoice. It's like the utility bill. Inshallah, same idea. Loan as well. Same thing with the loan in the Sharia, ah, we don't factor interest. So what we do is that you take the principal portion of your loan, multiply by 12, and that's the amount of that loan that you have uh, essentially don't have in your hand. You don't have istiqrar uh, of mal. You don't have the istiqrar of that wealth in your hands. Okay. Uh, how do you va uh, evaluate or value your merchandise for the purposes of zakat. Should it be at retail or should it be at, uh, at, at uh, wholesale? What do you think? If I was to buy a car from uh, the, the, the um, what is it, the auction, yes? Hmm? Should I value that car that's sitting in my, on my property for a year at the price that I bought it at the auction or at the price that I'm trying to sell it at? What do you think? Auction, number one, sell it at number two. Which one is it? One or two? Come on, people, tell me. What do you think? Okay, let me give you an easier example. Say I am importing iPhone cases, right? Mashallah, I'm a miskeen. I'm selling these iPhone cases on Amazon for a loss. <laughs> Anybody who has sold stuff on Amazon knows what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm importing iPhone cases from China, okay? Now I import them from China at a, a, a very low cost, $1 per iPhone case, okay? And now my inventory is sitting in, in the Amazon warehouse, not selling, because like a miskeen, it's not, you know, Amazon is suppressing me. <laughs> uh, so now here is the question, all right? I'm trying to sell the inventory for $10, $10 for the iPhone case, okay? But I bought it wholesale for a dollar. What figure do I use? $1 or $10 for valuating my zakat? What do you think, people? $1 or $10, people? What do you think? There's no wrong answer. Just say something. Okay, here's the hint. The hint here is that all stock should be valued at retail price. Ah, so what do you think? Is it $1 or 10? Ah, Ahsan, thank you. Alpha Diallo, very nice. It is exactly $10. It's at the retail price. Once the zakat anniversary, the day you owe zakat comes, on that day, you look at the retail price of your stock and that is how you value it. This is, of course, if you're selling physical stock, right? If you're selling software, again, software is not, uh, you know, like um, an actual, it's not, it's not, it's not a uh, product that's sitting on your shelf. You can sell because the product sitting on your shelf is limited, right? Software is unlimited. You can sell as many, uh, you know, as possible, right? Unlimited amount, really. Okay. Uh, dead merchandise. Okay. This is merchandise that is uh, depreciated in value and is liquid. An example of this was maybe you are selling CD players, okay? MashaAllah, that was your business. And then along came the iPhone and 
put you out of business or the along came the iPod, excuse me, and put you out of business. That is a dead merchandise. You have hundreds of CD players in your inventory and now they're worth next to nothing. So what do you do? Well, it should be valued at what's currently worth as debt merchandise. Is that CD player worth a dollar? Maybe it's worth a dollar. So you just value it as such, right? It has no actual resale value. And in reality, you might even like, you know, value it as zero uh, in certain situations. Undelivered merchandise. You ordered something from China and it's stuck in the supply chain. Allah knows All the, the Swiss canal is again blocked. My iPhone cases are stuck on a ship. What do I do? Well, you're waiting for it to be to arrive, uh, but you haven't been able to price it at its retail price because you don't have that money. You don't have that uh, stock in your hand. In that case, it's only fair for you to value it at the purchase price. Whatever you purchased it at, that's the price you value your merchandise on. Uh, let's add a, a couple of more things here. Work in progress and raw materials. Unfinished products and goods, raw materials. Again, valued in their current state or at the cost price, whatever it costs you to source those materials. Uh, and de damage merchandise, of course, based on their condition. Right. The idea is simple. Whatever, if you are valuing stuff that you can sell, value it at what you can sell it at. If you're valuing something that you can't sell, okay, then value it, it as something that is almost negligible. Or if you're valuing something that you purchased, but you don't have it yet, your purchase price is what you value your inventory at, inshallah. All right. Now, let's took, take a, some examples of valuation of inventory just to make it not so dry. Okay. Mashallah, look at all these bright, nice spices. Allahu Akbar. Right, this is what this is paprika and this is turmeric mashallah uh i think this is chili i don't know what this is salt pepper mashallah excellent very very nice bright pictures bay leaf this is the staple of all youtubers <laughs> youtube chefs all right let's consider how to value the value the stock of the following businesses okay restaurants ingredients and all food stuff are zakatable and are valued at what they're currently worth. Okay, this is important. They're valued uh, at what they're currently worth. Now, of course, a restaurant is not going to have stuff sitting for a year. I mean, if they have, you know, stuff sitting for a year, <laughs> you're probably not eating at that restaurant. Um, they're going to, uh, over the, the, their inventory turns over very fast, okay, because it's food, okay? But certain food items can be long-term. And even before that, maybe on the zakat date, the person looks at all the stuff they have, all the inventory they have, and they say, you know what? This is all the flour. This is all the stuff that I have to source my food, to bake my bread. And this is its value. Uh, currently, what you know it would be if I was to try to purchase it. And this is how I will uh, you know, value it and then pay zakat on it. Maybe you are a person who has a jeweler. Mashallah. You sell gold and silver allahu akbar now what happens in this situation uh, anything that's marked for uh, marked for sale or held with the intent to resell is valued at their respective retail prices again you price it by its retail price okay uh, just like the example of the iphone case just like the example of the car on the lot okay here is another one grocery store again grocery store it's not going to, you're not going to have groceries sitting around for a year. Again, miskin. If your groceries sits in your store for a year, you are a miskin probably. If your grocery store is about to go out of business. Uh, <laughs> but as, assume you're now paying zakat, just like you're, you're taking the method of paying zakat on your anniversary date for everything, uh, irrespective of how long it's been with you. Okay. Then again, you look at the retail price of the fruits and the veggies, mashallah, and then you accordingly pay zakat. Let's uh, turn our attention to business properties, okay? Business properties and the importance of intention. If we're about to finish, so I'll take a few. Uh, I'll take the questions, brother Asif, at that time if you're okay with that, okay? Uh, business properties and importance of intention. Uh, here again, the idea is its own uh, for the purposes of investment or the purposes of uh, you know making money by reselling. 
okay, that's a business property or investment property, residential property. There is no zakat on it whatsoever, okay? Uh, properties purchased with the express intent to resell is valued at its current market value for zakat purposes, meaning your only intent to purchase that condo was to resell it. You have no intention of living in it or whatever, right? So if that property, if you have rented it out, you don't pay zakat on it. But if you are only purchasing it and, you know, say like you have removed the person who's renting, you're like, you off you go. And now you're trying to sell it. And that property is sitting on the market for a year waiting to be sold. Okay. Unimaginable in Toronto, but could happen. Okay. Then that property is a pure business asset because you're trying to sell it just like you're trying to sell your iPhone case. All right. Then in that case, it's valued at its current market value for zakat purposes. And then you don't have to pay zakat on it until you've sold it. Once you sell it, you take the money and then pay the zakat uh, on it uh, afterwards, inshallah. Okay. Importance of intention. Clear intention to sell, zakatable. Clear intention for personal use, not zakatable. Okay. No create clear intention. You don't know what you're doing. Allahu Akbar. No problem. No zakat until you'd make up your mind. Conditional intention. Still no zakat. Right, you're like, if this happens, if it turns into valuable, if I, you know, go to Pakistan and live there, it doesn't matter. Right, property has no zakat on it by default, only when you have a clear intention to resell. Okay, uh, that is alhamdulillah. That let's look at some questions and answers that you may have, inshallah. Ta'ala. Um, I have inventory, but it's co signment. I don't own it, but I do still have to pay zakat on it because I profit 20% on the shoes. Uh, Brother Asif, um, uh, what's it called? Are you here, Brother Asif? You're here, right? Uh, would you like to just like explain your your, uh, your question? I've, I've given you the opportunity to talk, a lot to talk, if you want to, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. I think I think he's not speaking, but that's okay, right? Uh, it says you it's it's consignment, yeah. Uh, like it's, it's like someone else has it, and then oh, that was for another brother. Oh, okay, khalas, no problem. Uh, well, uh, inshallah, what the idea is that uh, if you you know if there's if there's goods that are left in the possession of a third party to sell, right? Uh, but you're making someone purchase it, I resell it. Ah, ah, okay, okay. So in that case, okay, I get it. So it's not your property. You don't own the property, right? You don't own the property, or sorry, excuse me, you don't own this, the, the inventory. Uh, you don't pay zakat on it. You only pay zakat on the money you have earned from it, the 20% profit, for example, that you're mentioning on shoes. Then that money is in your bank account. And afterwards, whenever the zakat anniversary comes, you pay zakat on it, whatever is in your bank account. Does that answer your question, Brother Asif? Alhamdulillah. Then we have, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for uh, for that question. That was an excellent question. Jazakallah uh, for the webinar. It's super helpful. Barakallah for attending. I had a question regarding dead stock fabric. A leftover fabric from clothing designs that is no longer being used. Is zakat owed on this? Uh, so again, this is dead fab uh, stock fabric is uh, anonymous attendee. I'm not sure if you're still here. Can you reuse that to make something or is it completely garbage? Let's take both situations. If it's completely useless, right? You can't do anything with this fabric. It has to be tossed in the garbage. It has no value, no zakat, right? Because it has no value, okay? Uh, or if it can be reused to create other fabric, like I, I'm not, I've never worked in fabric or whatnot, right? But assume it's like, you know, pieces of fabric that can be, you know, utilized for something else, right? Then it is, uh, then you take whatever you think it's its value as a raw material, whatever is your, you know, valuation according to what's, fair in the market and then you on that pay zakat either way that's the two those are the two options right like it's either completely useless or it has some value 
This completely useless knows a cat. If it has some value, guesstimate to the best of your ability its value and then pay zakat on that on the zakat anniversary. Allah uh, We have Brother Shayan saying, could you confirm treatment of the following? Investment stocks in corporation and investments in RSP accounts. Should we consider the tax impact of the RSP account? So I looked, I, I, I talked about this in the investments webinar, but I'll repeat this point, which is that RSP accounts, whatever is in held in your RSP accounts, uh, you have self-directed RSP. Self-directed RSPs, you have access to it minus the withholding tax. So you subtract the withholding tax and then whatever else you have access to, you pay the cap on it. Okay, that's number one. Uh, group RSPs, you don't have access to generally unless you have left your work and whatnot. Group RSPs, you don't pay zakat on it until you get access to it. So that's when it comes to investments in RSP accounts. When it comes to investments in corporations, so now the corporation account is not going to be, that's going to be like a, you're going to have capital gains tax on that. Uh, it's not like a, a registered account like RSP or TFSA, right? So the, uh, whatever, say your corporation is just a holding company, you're holding money in it and you're buying uh, stocks in it to, you know, keep it growing, so to say. So what you do is you look at how much of this money in your corporation, right, that's invested in stocks, how much of it would be liquid? Like if you were to liquidate it, how much would you get in the corporation? Not in your hand as a person, because if you were to take it out, from the corporation in your hand, you have to pay a bunch of more taxes. But just in the corporation, if you liquidate everything, what's left in the corporation's hands, right? Then that's the amount that you pay as a cap. All right. And then, as I said before, if you have a corporation, it's best to separate the corporation's zakat from your own zakat for this particular case precisely. Because if you were to take it out of the corporation, there's an additional tax that you pay from on a personal tax uh, level, right? So that's why we say, no, no, you're not, your intent is not to take it out. Your intent is to keep it in the corporation, shelter it from the tax for as long as you can. So pay zakat on it as if the corporation is an entity by itself. I hope that makes sense, inshallah. Uh, we have Brother Asif saying question. This time I buy a shoe. Oh, actually, sorry, Brother Asif, there was a bar uh, coffee. There was, um, there's also a question from Sajis Faizi. Forgive me for mispronouncing your name. I have a, a question, please explain zakat about gold. And cash money, dear teacher. Okay, so money is the capital. You pay the capital money, <laughs> right? Uh, gold uh, is if gold is bought as an investment, hmm, as an investment, you pay zakat on gold that is bought as an investment. Gold that is jewelry that you wear, like a woman particularly would wear, because gold men can't wear, right? Uh, then that is a difference of opinion between scholars. The Hanafi school says you have to pay zakat on that, just like the regular gold. The others say no zakat on it because the jewelry is mayul bas adatan. It's worn, you know, regularly. Regularly doesn't have to be daily. It's just like here and there, the, a person wears it. Uh, that is like clothes, so there's no zakat on it. So it depends on which uh, opinion you take. But if it's investment gold, gold you're buying for the sake of, you know, you're worried about inflation worried about a run on the banks, you're worried about, I don't know, the world order collapsing, you basically got on that, inshallah. All right. Uh, we have, uh, this time I buy a shoe for 180 It's worth $500. Allahu Akbar. Brother, what is this? AJ's or something, right? AJ ones. <laughs> I'm selling it for 500 Do I pay zakat on the 180 or 500 I believe 500 based on the retail example earlier, but I would like to confirm, correct, you are absolutely correct in assuming it is on the retail price. If its stock price has increased in value, you pay zakat on that price, the retail price, inshallah. Uh, because with shoes, I'm deciding the selling price, I pay zakat on what I'm valuing. Yes, as you value it, as you price it, you pay zakat on it accordingly. It was the AJ one, Allahu Akbar, I knew it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Barakallahu Inshallah. Any other questions we have uh, from the, the attendees? There are no other questions, then 
that brings us to the end of our program. Jazakallah khid, Sheikh Arij, for joining us today and conducting this uh, clear, transparent uh, program. Mm. Inshallah, we'll be having more programs with you. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Um, as I mentioned, um, that if anybody is looking to donate, then they can go to www.nzfcanada.com slash donate. And I have also put that in the chat. And if you have any other questions, you can also uh, email uh, Imam Arij or you can also uh, go to NZF as we are having a, a service this year where we are providing consultations to anybody who has inquiries about their zakat and any specific questions. So Jazakallah khairan and inshallah we'll see you again soon, Sheikh. Thank you very much uh, for having me and thank you all for the questions. I, as I said, like if you want to, you know, follow me on Twitter, we can you can ask me questions there too. Uh, I actually like to interact on it more than even email. So, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Okay, take care. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.